Holy crap, we did it. Oh my gosh. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What's going on everybody and welcome to a slightly different kind of gameplay video. Obviously recently we have had Dungeons and Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realms released on Arena and I have not, one, kept up with any of the cards, but two, I have not tested or played with any of those cards yet either. And so what I thought I would do is kind of just go through a very quick token draft, just see how it goes and uh, maybe learn something along the way. This is obviously going to be a learning experience for me, but hopefully for you guys as well. And just to be clear, I am not the best drafter in the world. I don't do it very often. Uh, usually I am a cube drafter, which is I, I basically I'm more familiar with the cards. And so this is going to be a pretty big learning curve for me because I'm going to be reading things on the spot and just giving it a shot and seeing how it goes. Uh, hopefully we will find some really nice cards, but I'm sure we'll make some silly picks along the way. And I'm sure you fine folks will remind me in the comments section, which is perfectly fine. That is okay. This is how we learn. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, guys, here we are jumping in for the very first time. Like I said, not a lot of knowledge about this. We've got a lot of things that we are going to be learning uh, uh, to add as a sorcery to when the fire class enters the battlefield, search your library for an equipment card, reveal it and put it into your hand. Uh, interesting. Okay. Whenever a creature you control attacks up to one target creature blocks. It. Okay. So we have to, I assume, level this up as a sorcery. That makes sense. Uh, when you cast your second spell each turn, put a 1-1 counter. That seems like a good 1-drop, honestly. Uh, and this seems very good. Obviously very equipment-based. Uh, interesting. That could be very powerful. Um, honestly, I love cards like this a lot. Uh, from your graveyard to the adventure into your dungeon. So this is another thing. I do not know much at all about the dungeon mechanics. Um, so we're going to be learning as we go here. Uh... I think we're actually going to go for the Grim Bounty. That might be incorrect, I don't know, but removal is always generally pretty solid. Um, uh, whenever creatures dealt damage by white this turn dies, create a 2-2. Two, two. Oh, I like that. Um, and it is within our colors. It's a 2-drop that is a 3-2 as well, which doesn't seem bad. Uh, so we're going to be... We're really going to be learning with this one. Um, venture into the dungeon... Gotcha. Okay, so you then, I assume, go through that turn by turn. That's interesting. Um, I think we're just going to start with right, or white, excuse me. We'll just see how this goes. Uh, again, not 100% sure, and I, I, truthfully, I don't know much about the, like, color combinations either, so we're kind of going into this completely blind here. Draw a card for each different color, man. Okay, don't particularly want that. Uh, roll a d20. Oh, I like that. I like that we've got d20s now. Um, we'll take another Grim Bounty, honestly. It's just very solid removal. Like, I I don't really want to pass that up if I can help it. Um, let's see. First Strike, Sacrifice, and Artifact. We do have a slight sub-theme with the, uh, Artifacts there, so that actually doesn't seem all that bad. Uh, this is very much out of our colors, generally speaking, but it is a very powerful card. It looks like uh enchant okay um each panel loses one wow that's really cool um i think though i actually want to take the rust monster i i like the idea of capitalizing on these artifacts that we plan to uh potentially throw out there so i just feel like that's not a bad thing to uh go for uh interesting okay Let's see, let's see. I really like this, honestly. Um, oh, I like that too. Oh, I really like that. Uh, let's try this. All right, so this is going to give us some options potentially uh, for when we roll dice, which I don't know, again, how prominent that uh, ability is throughout, but I really, really like that. Uh, that also seems quite interesting. 
Ooh, I like that a lot too, actually. Um, pretty straightforward cards here, but I actually really like those. I'm gonna try the dueling rapier here. Um, <clears throat> ooh, what's this? Rear charger token. Other creatures you control enter the battlefield. Oh yes. Okay, that is like 100% the card we take, I think. Uh, and it looks like we're kind of solidifying ourselves in this red-black strategy already. Um, again, not the best drafter in the world, so please don't take this too harshly, but uh, I do feel like the sooner you can solidify, that seems like a very solid option. Um, that being said, normally it's not a great idea to go too crazy with that, so I wouldn't suggest it overall. Uh, that seems like the exact kind of card that we want. We've already got some removal. I'm going to take the creature over the removal piece. Um, we do need some firepower here, in my opinion, and uh, we do need a little bit more in terms of uh, treasure, but also just in general, uh, some, some power here. Uh, venture into the dungeon. Okay, when you roll a d20. <laughs> uh, interesting. Oh, I kind of like that. Um, our creature gains double strike. Uh, I'm gonna take the critical hit. It's just a uh, a little spell here to, or a little uh, yeah. Let's do that. It's just a little like you know boost spell. It's nothing crazy, but I feel like it's not bad. Um, yeah, sure, sure. We're very heavy into this, and it seems like it's open. Uh, ooh. Oh, yes, please. Uh, that seems quite good. Uh, let's see what else we have. Sacrifice, draw two cards, and create a treasure token. That's not bad either, to be honest. Uh, let's see. Okay, so whenever. I like that a lot. Uh, <laughs> that's interesting. Um, I mean, I think it's definitely the fire giant. It very potentially just dies super quickly to be honest so it's not necessarily the best but i do feel like um oh i love the the new man lands i talked about that before but i do feel like it's probably worth it to to give it a shot uh each plan sacrifices and a creature you control gain menace until the end of the turn that seems quite good uh creature blocking it interesting uh oh i think it's just improvised weaponry right like that's just by far the best we are lacking slightly in our three drop slot anyway uh so i'd rather kind of get something going there um i do like the the fates reversal i feel like that's potentially an option that uh we could really take advantage of and just the battlefield destroy target creature and play control so it'll damage this turn okay um i i'm thinking <sighs> just exactly talk I do kind of like that as well. It's just like card draw. Um, it's either the Rust Monitor or the Fates Reversal as a way to one, venture into the dungeon, but then also kind of go for it. I think we just take the Rust Monster though. We're very aggro centric in terms of like just spitting out a bunch of these little tokens, these uh, treasure tokens, and hoping we can get there. At the beginning of your end stuff, if creature dies, turn into one of the cards of your life, put one of them in your hand, the rest in your group. Uh, that's interesting. Um, oh, it might be Deadly Dispute. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I like that too. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to take the uh, Deadly Dispute here. This gives us an option to uh, to not only draw further into our deck, which is obviously going to be very, very helpful, but uh, I do think it, it also just kind of works with what we're trying to do here. Um, we already have one critical hit. I think the second one becomes significantly worse. Uh, so clearly she's not like, that's, eh. I mean, it seems kind of okay, but it doesn't seem great. Um, it might just be Brazen Dwarf, but that's very unexciting. Um, I don't know, we'll, we'll take this. I don't love this though. It seems like at best they just, you know, at best you're gonna get something okay, but like it doesn't seem great. Uh, that's okay actually. Um, let's see. That seems so behind the curve. I think we take this. Um, it can potentially trade with some early game stuff. That doesn't seem bad. Uh, do do do. Air dagger. What does this do? Uh, yeah, I'll take that. Um, I think I like that okay. It's not great necessarily, but, you know, it's something. 
Uh, create two treasure tokens. Uh, yeah, I'll happily take that. And I think I like that better than the deadly dispute. Um, it also comes later in the game, which truth be told, that's probably better for us. So I think that's okay. Uh, here it's a pretty easy pick. Um, I'll throw this out there. I mean, it's not it's not ideal. We don't really want two of those. We'll take that. Uh, and you'll notice right now, guys, I'm not really like picking through the deck at this point. Uh, we we will do that obviously very very soon. Uh, but I'm not really stressing about it right this second. I think for the time being, I just want to make the best picks I can. Uh, as as I am hopeful that I'm not doing too badly, but. Uh, if you've completed a dungeon, that's very interesting. Oh, I like that a lot. I um, actually really like this Hired Hexblade. Uh, just through Target Artifact. I just I don't know that these are great. Um, I'm going to take this. It's potential card draw for us, uh, so it's it's fairly straightforward. Uh, what are you? Gains a double strike. That's critical critical hit again. Do these get better? Maybe they do. I, I don't think so, though. I think we just take the, the fireball. That's just a really powerful removal spell. Instant speed. Yeah, it's five mana, but um, I, I feel like this is probably worth it to, to have at least one of. Um, our deck doesn't seem amazing, though, I will say. Uh, it's, I mean, very crucially, I could very easily be making bad picks, but oh, that seems perfect for us. Uh, yeah, that's like a very, very clear take, I believe. Again, let's take time, let's make sure, but I, uh, I, I don't see a better option than this. Uh, Forsworn Paladin just seems perfect. So let's take it. Um, all right, uh, another critical hit. There's plenty of those. Uh, Feign Death. Another unexpected windfall, which uh, I, I don't love multiples of that, to be brutally honest. Um, but I think it might be the best pick here. I'm going to throw one into the sideboard for now. Uh, and just about to target it. Okay. It might just be that. That's just a big beater. We're, we're kind of lacking in the, the big, massive kill the opponent department. So... I think I'm okay with that. Um, I think it's just another, another hired Hexblade. I don't think that, I think in this deck, this is just like a premium two drop because 90 per, well, hopefully 90% of the time you'll have a uh, treasure token to sacrifice. Um, and maybe that's incorrect. I have no idea, but we're going to try it. Um, I guess we'll take the, the second Swarming Goblins. Um, I'm not sure. We're we're obviously really heavy on one drops here, and we don't need to be. So I think we definitely take that out. That seems terrible. So ignore the lowest roll. Ooh. Oh wow. Uh. That seems really good. Um. Yeah. In this deck, I think we definitely take that. That just seems great. Um. Again, I don't want to flood our one drop, so I'm I'm going to minimize this. We'll obviously come back to it, don't worry, but um Okay. Let's see. I mean, honestly, I'm going to rare draft at that point. Um we'll take you another critical hit. Um just take you Wow, how many critical hits can we possibly get? Uh, that's hilarious to me. All right. So we didn't get any fixing, uh, which is fine. We're only two colors, so we should be able to manage, no problem. I'm not tremendously worried about that. Um, but what do we need to do? Let's look, first of all, creatures, we have 18, uh, which is pretty solid. We definitely want more creatures than most anything else, so I think that that's good. Uh... A single critical hit doesn't seem bad. Maybe that we don't need. Um, do like that. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I like the double removal there. I'm not. I'm not stressed about that. And maybe we can get rid of a uh, some 
some lower ground stuff. I don't think this really... It's not, like, synergistic with our deck at the very least, so I'm not really stressed about that. This, obviously, uh, does work with our deck, as well as the Forsworn Paladin. Hexblade works great. The Thieves' Tools is okay. I mean, it's not amazing. Um, honestly, white does... I mean, it's fine. Um, this works extraordinarily well with the Barbarian class, to be honest, so I kind of like that. I... Hmm, I think we definitely take out one of those... We're definitely lacking in our three drop slot though. Um maybe it's one of you. And we throw one of you back. Uh and then still have one more card to cut. Uh in case you don't know, uh the the little I do know about drafting, you do obviously want to keep to 40 cards as best you can. Now there are obviously exceptions, but generally speaking, that's pretty safe to assume. Uh, and generally as well, you do want to have 17 lands and then 23 other cards. That's just kind of a golden ratio. Again, there are exceptions as always, but uh, I think in general, that's kind of the way to go. I think it might be one of these big guys. Uh, I think it's the Baleful Beholder. Um, as cool as that card is, I think the Black Dragon actually kills something theoretically. So we're going to run with this. We're going to give this one a shot. Uh, uh, double check lands really quick, I suppose. We do need black and red pretty early. So I think an even split with the the focus more on red makes sense. Yeah, I, I think we're going to keep this. We're going to try it. We're going to run it through some games. We'll see how we do. But I hope you guys enjoy again. Learning experience for us all. So I apologize. This may not be the best draft in the world, but uh, let's see how we do. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. And what do we have? Uh, actually, I really like this hand. This is obviously just a 2-2 anyway. Uh, so that's a very playable 2-drop. And this obviously gives us some, some heads up at the very beginning. So I'm going to keep this. I think this is OK. Uh, obviously not amazing, but it does have the early game. And now we've got some, some long game interaction as well. So I feel like this is probably just good. Um, I'm not going to waste time. I am going to go ahead and do this. Now, the one thing I do wonder about this, and we'll have to test this out. Uh, if we level this up, do we get all of the abilities? Is that how that works? Because uh, truthfully, I don't know. This is a sorcery. We do need to keep that in mind. Um, let's go ahead and attack in. And let's just test this out. We're going to level this up right now. OK, so we do. Uh, wow, that's really good. That's like super, super good. OK, uh, so we can level this up all uh, completely if we would like. Um, alternatively, we could play Rust Monster and Hired or, or Hired Hexblade. I think first things first, we just attack, though. Uh, always kind of want to get the attack in early if you can. All right, now we all get haste, which seems great. Um, if we get a land on top, we've got the fireball available to us, but next turn we've also just got, you know, rust monitor or something like that. So feeling okay about this. The opponent's not playing anything, uh, which is interesting. All right. So I think the play is definitely to shoot for the rust monster first. Um, and maybe it's honestly just to go for it. I don't know. They just don't seem to be doing anything. Uh, and so... I'm going to go for it. I'm going to I'm going to pile on the damage while we can invest in our creatures as best we can. And now. That's pretty good. Um, all right. Hmm. I mean, I think we just do this. OK. Cool. Uh, we will make you the menace and we attack in. I mean, that seems pretty good. They can double block here and that's a bad block. Uh, they could double block the hired Hexblade and that seems okay. We probably should have put it on the monitor or monster. Wow, not monitor. That was a mistake, I think. But uh, we're actually doing okay here. I mean, it's not great, but we're we're not losing the game. That's very interesting. Okay. Cool. Um, let's go land. Uh, we could have critical hit at some point too, although we were not able to this time. So let's do this. Go ahead and kill that just so it can't block in particular. Uh, let's do this. 
And then we just get to double strike one of these. Um, so that should win us the game, he says theoretically. Let's do this. Uh, yeah. We did it. Uh, that was really efficient. Um, the opponent really didn't do that much. That was kind of interesting. Uh, but that worked out really well. Honestly, pretty happy with that. We do go to game two. Um, interested to see what they could have. Um, and we didn't see a ton. Uh, and it did seem like the aggression was kind of the way to go. Uh, they did. <sighs> We're going to run it back as is, I think. Um, I, I don't particularly need to make any updates, I don't think, so we're we're gonna try it as is. We didn't see, like I said, a lot of the opponent's deck, and so I'd like to to maybe push through and just see what we can find. If we if we lose this game, it's okay. It's totally fine. Um But I really like our deck actually. It's pretty aggressive. Uh red black is usually kind of a safe bet when you're trying to to first draft something. At, granted, we just kind of happen to go that route, but like in general, uh, red black tends to be a bit more aggressive, uh, which just means for the for the time being, it's usually a bit safer because you can just kind of push a little bit further. It also gets a lot of the removal in terms of burn uh, as well as actual removal spells. So I was like, yeah, kind of just makes sense to try. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm very excited. Uh, let's see what the opponent. I'm assuming they're going to choose to play first naturally. Wow, we cannot keep this hand. Uh, that is so unfortunate because wow, what a what an interesting place to be. Um, all right, obviously not great because we don't have a whole lot of playable stuff. But I think we put actually it. I think is just the uh, as sad as that is. I think that's the right play because like here. We get the black land, which means that the thieves tool can actually create a treasure token, which seems better. I, I just think that that's probably the correct play, which is uh, interesting. OK, uh, so we're going to do this and we're going to do this. Go ahead and get a treasure token out. Next turn, we'll probably just play the rest monster, depending on what they do. Uh, or we're going to kill that. That might be the better play. Um, yeah, I'm going to take the opportunity. Get rid of this. Uh, it just means that one, we get more treasure tokens, so we're furthering our game plan, but two, they obviously then don't get to equip and start dealing some major damage to us. Interesting. Uh, okay, very cool. They're gonna equip here. So it's a four two with trample. Um, honestly, not the end of the world for us because this has first strike. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and throw this on here. We'll auto pay there. That's fine. Um, and so now we do have a uh, a blocker for this. I mean, looking at all of this that they have equipped on here, you would kind of hope it is a little bit better. But they do give it flying. So that's going to get uh, some damage in at the very least, which is good. Sure. Uh, unfortunately, we can't block. Uh, yep. All right. Uh, this is a really cool little combo here, though, I will say. So let's do this first. I'm going to attack in. Uh, they can't block it. I think we're going to go ahead and get them a little bit further down the line here. Uh, we're going to throw out white and another rust monster. Uh, and I think we're good. We have the unexpected windfall, so if we just draw like a dead card, the unexpected windfall should be really good for us. It just fills up our hand. It gives us a little bit more fuel for these rust monsters, like kind of does everything we need it to do. A uh, little worried about this Pegasus. It does have flying. We don't really have a way to deal with that. Uh, so, oh, we thank you. Thank you for attacking. Why would you do that? Uh, what does the dungeon do? This is going to be new for us, guys. I have not seen much of the dungeon stuff, so... I really like this. Uh, they just get to scry one. Well, that's not that good. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not great. Uh, oops, nope, wrong. Sorry. Uh, yes, happily block here because we have first strike. Uh, rest monster seems pretty solid. That's all I'm saying. Uh, they do get this little two one, I suppose. Oh, no, they yes, they do. If they want, uh, they they can turn this into a two one. Sure. 
So we do take some damage, but crucially we we did okay there. Um Yeah, I think it's definitely just let's just do this. Kinda have to. Ooh. That is very good for us, honestly. Okay, uh We're gonna attack in with everything. All too happy to do that. If they want to uh try and kill this, they certainly can. Okay, they didn't. Uh, we could have certainly dealt more damage here, but I'm actually kind of holding off. Um, only reason being, uh, we don't know what this next turn could hold, and I'd like to be able to play this Black Dragon. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we do need at least one of these treasure tokens still around. Uh, but Black Dragon comes in, immediately kills hopefully something on their side of the field, and provides us with a 4-4 flyer, which is as of now, at least, better than anything that they have. Now, they can obviously equip elsewhere if they'd like and maybe do something, but so far they're not planning on it. Um, okay. Cool. Fair enough. Uh, Alright. Let's do this. Ooh, you're really good too. Um, Alright, so... If we do this, we get a treasure token. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we could still play the black dragon. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Okay, with treasure. We are going to block here, or kill here, excuse me. Uh, and then we're attacking with everything. And now we have a 7-7, seven, seven, which, I mean, that has to be the priority for them to kill, obviously. And this also, unless they kill it, stops them from coming in and just, like, swinging outright. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. I think that's good. We didn't use those treasure tokens, like I said, to, to play the rust uh, monsters, or, or power them up, excuse me. But I do think it was worth it to, to get the black dragon down. Okay. Uh, very good card, obviously. I mean, but uh, that being said, I actually don't think this is a very good card. It's a 0-4 flyer defender, so it's not furthering your game plan, and it lets both people draw cards. I I avoid any kind of, like, uh, even card draw in any kind of game. I just feel like that's probably not what you want to be doing, so I don't think I really like this, uh, but it is what it is. They've got one white mana. If they can't kill us this turn with any kind of attack, uh, we are pretty well set up here because while well, they could, I guess, block in a way that makes it difficult for us to win, they're going to lose a lot in that process. So kind of okay with it. And we do draw a bunch of cards as well. It's only one card, actually. That just seems not very good. Um, all right. Let's see how it plays out. I, I'm really liking our deck, surprisingly. Um, I don't think it's perfect. I think obviously we've got some issues, but it synergizes quite well, in my opinion. Uh, opponents given us the GG and they give up. That is game one, guys. We've got a nice 2-0 victory over opponent number one. We are going to jump into game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two, just waiting on the opponent to decide if they want to play first. Uh, and again, a strong start for us. Uh, not that I expect every game to go that smoothly, but uh, that was pretty killer. Um, here is one of these hands where you got to weigh some options, people. Uh, we have got a playable spell on turn two. We have got the double black. We don't have any red. Do we try it? Uh, truth be told, I think the answer is no, but the majority of our deck is mountains, so I'm going to try it. <laughs> uh, we're here to try. We are here to try. Um, th those are, that's actually a very common issue that pops up in draft more so than anywhere else is the, the mana issue. Uh, and I, I think that generally you should err on the side of caution, obviously. Oh, wow. Okay. Instant payoff. Um, generally you should err on the side of caution, uh, because you do want to make sure that you're able to play your spells just in general, but thankfully it kind of worked out. Uh, so I'm not really worried about it. Um, here, I'm actually going to play the Hired Hexblade. If they want to trade off, I'm all too happy to do so. Um, the reason being, this gains value later on in the game, while this does not. Uh, and so, essentially, trading a 2-2 for a 2-2 right now seems pretty much fine to me. Um, incremental value is such a key point to make. 
uh, when you're looking at, you know, draft in general. And so, perfect. If that's what they wanted to spend their, their removal spell on, that's fine. That is not a huge hit to us. Uh, certainly not good for us, but it's not the end of the world. So I'm okay with that. Let's play the dwarf here. Um, interested to see what they do here. If they attack in, most likely they have another burn spell, but it looks like they're not going to. So great. Um, all right. So we could just steal this. That doesn't seem great, uh, to be honest. Uh, the other option is we could attack in with the critical hit. That doesn't seem great. Um, so I think what we're going to do is just pass for the time being, but uh, eventually we do plan to, to critical hit here and maybe uh, get something out. But they're going to haste to this. Okay. Uh, sure. And they're just attacking with this. So they most likely don't have a burn spell in hand, otherwise they would be attacking. Um, so we're going to take the three. All right. We do have Zalto here, uh, which is a pretty solid card, to be brutally honest. So I'm just going to throw it out there. Uh, if it's dealt damage, we get to venture into the dungeon, which is very, very good. Um, and they are going to deal damage to it, which means we do venture. Uh, all right, what do we do? Both of these scry one. Oh, no, excuse me. Uh, I think we do this. Uh, I'm going to put that on the bottom. I think at this point, we're more looking for lands than anything else. We we really want to get to Black Dragon, so a one drop isn't really going to get us out of this position. Uh, and unfortunately, I'm going to take the block. I'm assuming they have a burn spell, but it's a nice little... Oh, they don't. All right. Uh, that was weird. Um, <laughs> with that in mind, uh, we're going to destroy this right now. Uh, unfortunately, that is a sorcery, so we do have to take the opportunity to destroy it at that moment. Uh, but uh, now we obviously have the treasure token. We can critical hit if we need to. We've we've got options. But here, even better, we're going to auto pay and we're going to kill out this army veteran. And now we are stabilized with a much stronger board presence than what they have. Uh, and it looks like they might be just flooding, uh, which is great for us. Um, let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, double strike the black dragon here. Um, perfect. Uh, and then I'm actually going to go ahead and, uh, no, I'm going to wait. The price of loyalty is a really interesting card because we can steal whatever creature they play. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, we got it. Um, the idea being we could steal whatever threat that they play and then we're just in great shape because we can finish off the game. And again, I don't feel like there's a whole lot that we want to take. Uh, the Deadly Dispute is an option um, to play with the price of loyalty, uh, but I don't actually like it. I don't like having little tiny combos in a draft deck because chances are it's probably not going to work out that you, the way that you'd like. We could up that with the price, the second price of loyalty, I suppose, but... Honestly, I'm just going to run it back, and we're just going to give it a shot. But we are one game up at the moment. Uh, feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. I, uh, I'm i surprised, uh, is all I can say. I'm very, very surprised, but I'm very happy. We're not doing too bad. Uh, considering we have never... I truthfully didn't know how some of these mechanics works. I, work, I still don't 100%. Uh, and so this is very much a learning experience for me. I do like drafting, but I'm not great at it, so we're... We're doing the best we can. Um, oh, 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 no. Uh, this is very floody. Five lands here. Um, I don't think we can keep this. We have no threats. I, I don't like it. Oh, this is bad, too. Um, this is bad on the other end. We do get the Barbarian class down early, but I, I don't think that's worth it. We may have to go down to five. Improvised weaponry. Like... We've got things that do create treasure, but we don't necessarily get lands, so I don't know. All right, well, we are we just have to go with it, guys. Uh, we're going to not die, or not use that, and we're going to throw this back. Um, this is terrible. This is really, really bad. Uh, I just talked about at the beginning of the video the optimal number of lands and stuff, which I still maintain. However, uh, this is certainly not a great showcase of that. All right, 
let's throw this out there. The good news is if this dies, which it likely will, uh, we do get a treasure token. Um, so we can continue at least playing some things, theoretically. Well, <laughs> uh, happy to attack in here. They shouldn't block. All right. Um, truth be told, maybe attacking wasn't the best idea, but that's okay. 3-3 three, three haste. All right. That's bad. That's really bad. Oh, man. Yep. We're just, I mean, just mana screwed. That's all it is. You can't help it. It's going to happen at some point. So we got to do the best we can with it. But that feels really, really bad. Uh, gains first strike until the end of the turn. That's terrible. Why wouldn't they? They don't. With total power six or greater, so that would have worked. Uh, so that was a bit of a mistake, I think, on their end. We're going to create a treasure token, because it's the best thing we can do. Uh, and we'll accept our punishment, which I assume is going to be quite terrible. Oh my goodness. We, I mean, we've drawn no land. <laughs> and honestly, like, the first hand would have been the best, just because it did have at least lands, but... It wouldn't have been good against this start from the opponent. I mean, look at the power that they have on the field at this point. There's not much that we could do about it. And here, I mean, we're we're very dead here. I'm going to go ahead and concede. We're going to jump into... Yeah, they had it right there. We're going to jump into our third and final game. Unfortunately, uh, that was just a rough one. I say third and final game. Third and final game of this match, though. Uh, that felt terrible. Uh, I mean, you can't help it. It is what it is, but let's uh, let's see if we can do better. We will play happily play first. Um, it's a very red focused hand, but I do think we keep it. If any land gives us rust monster, which is quite good. Uh, so I think we just keep it. It's not a great start, to be brutally honest, but uh, we do have some things that we can get to hopefully down the line here. So we'll do the best we can. Uh, I love these new basic lands, by the way. They look beautiful absolutely beautiful uh also something i wanted to talk about um we haven't streamed in a long time uh however people are still uh kind enough to follow us on twitch and that kind of thing we don't want to lose that audience we are still trying to kind of work on the the networking issues that we've had but unfortunately we just haven't been able to to dedicate time to it but this weekend um hopefully again theoretically uh, I should have a little bit of time. Caitlin is actually going to be out of town all weekend. Uh, she's leaving Thursday, in fact. Um, reason being, we're obviously getting married in October. It's going to be her bachelorette weekend, so they're out doing their fun thing. So uh, I'm going to be spending some time hanging out with the guys and most likely trying to stream uh, here and there. So we'll see. I don't know how long I will be streaming, obviously, like from from day to day, but we will do the best we can to, to keep that going. I'd like to make sure that uh, honestly, I think this is the right call. Um, I'd like to make sure that we can, um, you know, just hang out and give streaming a shot. If it works great, if it doesn't, that's OK. But I would like to, to see what we can do. So we will see. Interesting. So if we block here and give double strike, they trade. Okay, I'm okay with that. Uh, we've seen this deck be very threatening in terms of just spreading out a few creatures. So any kind of trades like that, I don't think I'm too upset taking. Uh, what's the play here? I think it's just to play this out. We do need another land. If we can get Swarming Goblins down, that'd be pretty sick. Uh, additionally, the, the Fireball is just really good in general, so maybe we can get something going here. We'll see. Can we get a land? No. That would be way too ambitious. Um, I think we wait, but I'm not sure. Um, not positive at all on that, but I think we're going to wait. <laughs> Uh, crucially, this is an instant, everybody, just as you are aware, but we do have quite a lot of five drops in our hands, so we need to get a land here. Uh, but this can kind of happily trade with anything and create a 2-2. Uh, two -two. Um, sure. Hmm. I think we stem the bleeding now.
Uh, I do think we kind of have to hit something here. And truth be told, I think we need to spread things out. So I'm going to get rid of that. I don't actually love that card very much, I'm learning. Um, I think it's just this. Uh, alternatively, I suppose we could throw this out, the fireball. Um, no, I think it's this. We need to spread the board out here. I think that's definitely the best play. Ooh, nat 20. All right. Heck yes. Okay. Uh, well, that's just super good. Um, <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to attack here. I'm going to critical hit if they do anything because uh, they have one card in hand and one mana on the field. So I'm all too happy to do that. Yep, they're going to take it. Good. All right. We snuck in some damage there. There was no need to critical hit if we didn't need to. They see it. I mean, they they know we've got it. So there's really no reason to to block there. Now, the opponent really does have to worry, though, what we could have. They can power up the cell sword, the jaded cell sword. That's their best option, I believe. But nope, they chose the armory veteran. Uh, interesting. Cool. My turn. I like it uh let's get you down oh yes all right i think it's time to kill some stuff guys uh let's do this let's get the veteran out of here uh we have the fireball we've got a lot of stuff uh i think we're gonna do this and kill you that gets that out of there um perfect and now we attack with these two Seems easy. Um, they're going to take it. That's fantastic. Uh, I'm all too happy to either throw away some goblins or just take the damage. Crucially, we are not anywhere close to dead. So, like, I am not that stressy about this. Um, they're going to pump up, I assume, just the vampire spawn, maybe. But it really doesn't matter. Uh, they're going to get probably some damage in. Three. That's fine. I don't particularly care about that. Uh, oh, yes. All right, so first things first. We're going to do this. Uh, oh, we should have paid with treasure. Whoops, that was a mistake, but that's okay. Um, all right, what do we need to kill here? I think it's this, actually. Got a nine, deals two damage to each player. All right. Uh... And we actually can just attack in with everything here. I'm assuming they have something. Okay, if we critical hit now, that's 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's game? He says questioningly. I think we got it. We did it. We won it. That is 2 and 0 oh overall. Wow, we are... Doing okay, guys. We're doing all right. Uh, we will go ahead and jump into, I believe, our third and final game of these uh, this draft. Yeah, we've got one game remaining. Let's see how it goes. All right, guys, here we are for our last game. Uh, so far, been very happy with the results. Uh, don't love this hand as a whole, though. If we have a black source, it's actually great. Uh, but if we don't, we are in very bad shape. So the question becomes, what do we do? Last time, we made the call to keep. And you know what? We're going to do it again, because who cares? At this point, we're just here to have fun and learn something new. This is not a good keep, though. <laughs> like, let me be clear. Black Dragon, not anywhere close to playable. This, eventually, sure. But these two cards, we basically have no playable cards in our hands. So generally speaking, this is not a good keep. Unless we draw a Black Source. And we, uh, we're going to draw a Black Source, people. Calling the shots, ladies and gentlemen. Calling the shots. I love it. Oh, man, I wish we had had that earlier on. All right, let's do this. That's just really good. Um, and I'm going to wait. Next turn, we can Hired Hexblade, sacrificing this, and then play the Barbarian class if we would like. Uh, that just seems really solid. All right, enters the battlefield or attacks. Wow. That's very good. That is very, very good. That's, like, super scary, honestly. All right, let's do this. Hey, with treasure. This does get a 1-1 counter on it, though, thanks to that. So that's actually really helpful. And then we will throw the U out. Uh, and pass. So we do have a way to... I mean, they can't just 
basically they can't just be like okay i'm gonna attack in like they do have to kind of think about things a little bit uh this does have vigilance this is just a sick card like it's very good all right so this is very clearly the dungeon deck uh which is good uh very good i'm sure and we don't really have a great play next turn um to be honest, we're we're a little lackluster there, so I think the play is just to level this up. It's kind of all we can do, uh, and we just don't attack. We're uh, the longer this game goes on, chances are the less likely we are to win. Uh, truth be told, thanks to these uh, the dungeons that they're kind of going through. Um, I guess one of them without paying its mana cost. That's so good. Um, so truth be told, we're not in a great spot at the moment either way. Um, but this does give us some options, so we'll we'll see. Uh, so we can just uh, basically double block this and hope they don't have anything. But I'm gonna wait. Uh, I don't I don't particularly want a two for well. I guess it's a one for one because ah I don't know I don't like it I don't like it at all. Um, that's also a card I don't like. Um. Wow, okay. Yeah, you got it. That's good. All right, uh, what do we want to do? We've got some options this turn, let me just say. Uh, we can Grim Bounty to to kill any of this, really. Um, we could just swarm in goblins, which doesn't seem like a bad idea, uh, given that we can really pump up the hired Hexblade. Uh, we could also just do this. Um, I think we're going to swarm in goblins. Let's try it. Got a 4 and an 11. So we keep the 11. Um, we're going to give it here. And I will happily attack in. Uh, if they want to double block, great. But they they have to double block. So that's just a, a good solid way to kind of get some damage in. Would love to level this up again. Uh, but I don't think we're going to get the opportunity. At least not right away. We've got a lot to deal with right now. Uh, they can destroy it. Yep, they will. That's solid, honestly. Um, but at this point, if they attack in with pretty much anything, we are trading where we can. Uh, so I don't know that they've got a great uh, attack. Although they're going to attack. All too happy to trade. Um, let's get you out. So we can Grim Bounty... Which I think might just be the play. Uh, we can also rest monster here if we'd like. Or we can just wait and utilize this for the black dragon next turn. I think I kind of like that play better. Um, Alright, so what do we do? I think we attack in. I We need to be aggressive here. If they want to double block, that's kind of fine. Um, ooh, they do gain life here, though. But I'm going to take that out. We can kill this next turn, so I'm not stressed about that. Uh, unless they, like, equip it with something, we have a kill there. So that's fine. Uh, I'm going to say no blocks. All right. They didn't play anything either. That's curious. All right. A little worried they could have a combat trick here, guys. 100%, but we're going to try and take out the Unicorn, and it worked. Uh, that's really surprising. All right, so we have, again, stabilized, but... Oh, wow, they had green in their deck this whole dang time. I had no clue. Um, but we are obviously still under some, some pressure in terms of life total. They are ahead of us, but we should be able to kind of relatively quickly even that up. Uh... All right, so first things first, we're just going to attack in with the Black Dragon. Uh, easy four. Then I think it's just play Zalto and then the, the Dwarf here. Um, and that's just going to provide us with, one, a very fast clock with Zalto, honestly. And then um, not only that, but it does give us some blockers. Uh, so they probably can't kill everything in one turn, and it looks like they just don't have... I mean, they're gaining life off of these innkeepers, which is very good, but um, it's not going to win them the game. You know what I mean? Uh, all right. 
That's interesting. So, crucially, what we can do is steal one of these. That way they can't kill Zalto. Uh, but they do kind of have to block it. So, I'm going to do that. This isn't great, but it's a... All right, we did it. We did it. All right, loving it, guys. Uh, again, what do we want to do? Uh, I kind of like the price of loyalties in this deck. Uh, or against this deck, I should say. Uh, solely because... I don't know that the critical hit is as worth it. Um, let's see. They just have a lot of like creatures, so I kind of just want to be able to to kill whatever we can. Um, I think the ogre is fine. We basically want anything that can trade up. Um, uh, maybe it's not the price of loyalty. I kind of just want to leave it the same. I. So the price of loyalty is very good because they do have a lot of creatures, but it's not like we're taking full advantage of it. It's good because we can steal a creature and just deal damage because they 90% of the time will have a creature. Um, and maybe after this game, we'll we'll change our tune and decide that we need it. But um, I do think, you know, we're, we're as well set up for most matchups as I think we can be. We'll see how well this one goes. But the opponent had a pretty good start, like... Uh, they, they had a lot out very quickly, so I'm a little worried, uh, about what they might have this time. We also got very lucky with the land. <laughs> uh, all right, what do we have? What do we have? Uh, yeah, this is a definite keep. Absolute definite keep. Black Dragon's a little awkward. Grim Bounty, uh, also a little late game, but assuming we can get some more lands, we will be in phenomenal shape. Um, oh, nice. Uh, okay. I'm going to play out the uh, Shambling Ghast first. Uh, I really like the Forsworn Paladin, don't get me wrong, but, um, and truth be told, getting this online sooner is probably better, but it's fine. Uh, okay. We'll do this now. Uh, and I am going to take the opportunity to do this. Uh, no attacks. I think that's probably okay. I mean, we're just trying to fast track this as best we can. They're gaining a lot of life, uh, which is scary. Um, that's very scary. Oh no, that's terrifying. Uh, we are going to need to kill that. <laughs> uh, like very, very quickly. Um, okay. Hmm. I'm gonna do this. This draws us a card, uh, so we get closer to a land that way. Uh, and there's a critical hit. That's not super helpful, but that's okay. Uh, hmm. All right. Um, <laughs> we're gonna do the same trick again. What? Yeah, just pay with treasure. Okay. Sorry, I misclicked there. Uh, give me a land, give me a land, give me a land. No crap. All right, well, let's see what happens. <laughs> I mean, the good news is even if they start getting counters on this, um, we should be able to just double block and kill because they, they've got one card in hand. Like, I, we just, we don't have lands, which is really bad for us. Um, and we're still not getting lands, so that's even worse. Um, all right, so what do we do? Uh, man, um, I think we just create a treasure and pass. Uh, the reason being we can critical hit here, but that feels really terrible. We are so unlucky with lands. Uh, that's also very scary. Uh, any flyer right now is scary, but worth noting, they don't have any cards in hand, so there's a world where we might be able to get through this. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right. So what do we kill here is the question. Um, I think it is the 3-3. Three, three. It just kind of has to be. We also get a treasure token back, which just means next turn we're still at four mana. <laughs> uh, in this scenario, do we attack... I think the answer is yes. Um, if they want to trade their Moon Dancer for our Paladin, 
They'd have to double block first of all, so that may not even work, but at least we can deal some damage. They're gonna start dealing damage to us potentially, but Shambling Ghast actually, uh, oh, that's really good. All right. Yep, you got it. This is a tough deck, man. I mean, it's very good. Um, all right. They're going to attack for three. Uh, I'm actually going to do this so we can get the treasure token. We just need lands. Uh, so we do have Grim Bounty again, so it's not the end of the world either. All right, that's good. Um, so if we do this, kill something, then what? Or we do this and just get a treasure, potentially more than that. Um, I think we do this. Uh, this is when it attacks, right? Okay, yeah. Um, so we could do this, but I don't think we need to. If we just pass and hope for the best. <laughs> oh, man. All right. When it enters the battlefield, they enter a dungeon. Is this the life gain thing? They gain a life, right? Is that, is that how this works? Yep. All right. That's so good. Uh, sure. The only good side to this is that they are investing quite a bit in, um, like, this planar ally and the moon dancer. We actually just get to kill it at some point um, with the, the Grim Bounty. So I'm not, like... I mean, it's not good for us, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's the end of the world either. Uh, they are going to get to scry one here, which is not great, but... Two, three, four... Five, so we can Black Dragon, uh, though it doesn't actually kill anything, which is kind of sad. Um, all right, I think we just have to do this. Um, yeah, I think that's correct. And then... All right, uh... I think we just attack here. That gives us more treasure. Just one, but that's good. Hopefully they fall for this and actually block. They're double blocking. Okay. They are thinking about this, which is fine. Um, all right, they're not going to block. <laughs> uh, good. Um, so do we want to critical hit it or do we not? I think not. I think we want to save. Um, yeah, we'll just let him take three. Oh, this is a tough game, man. This is a really tough game. They are playing exceptionally well. Uh, they've got a very, very good deck as well. I, I like it quite a bit. Um, all right, we're going to block here. We're going to critical hit here. So this at least trades, um, gets rid of that. So we traded up there. I mean, it was a two for one, but we traded up. Yes, so they gain more crap. I don't like that. Um, on the plus side, that does give us a target for this if we need it. Uh, I think first and foremost, though, we do just attack, right? Or we could. All right, hear me out. Give me two. All right, that's two. That's not bad. Um, all right, we're we're in a long-term game plan here, guys. Uh, do we want to do this? No, we don't. We're gonna take the three. All right. We like have to kill this. So this gains them life, and then uh, we. Basically, anytime they would gain that life, they would be putting counters on stuff. Like, we just can't allow that to happen. Uh, and so we are playing the long game here a bit, but hopefully it's working. All right. Gain some more treasure. Two of them. Man, this hoarding ogre is, like, kind of sick. Um, I think we just go ahead and do this. Cancel. Wait a second. We'll just do it here. Um, so what we can do next turn, 
Why did I pay with treasure? That was so useless. Uh, what we can do next turn is use the treasure that we get to bust, bust, boost. Wow, I cannot say that. The rest monster up. Uh, equipping it with the thieves tools, so then it just like straight up kills them potentially. You have hex brief. Okay, that's totally fine. I don't really care about that. Um, they also can't kill us this turn, which is fantastic. All right, so we're gonna move this over here. We are going to attack here, here, and here. Give me a nat 20. All right, that's pretty good still. All right, uh, we let them block the way they want to block. They can kill the Hoarding Ogre if they'd like, but we do get to kind of trade some things off here. We should win this turn. They have nothing in hand. That's fine. Let's do this. We're going to buff this. Uh... I don't want to pay with treasure. Okay, so we just do one more. All right. So now they have declared their blockers, and this should be more than enough to kill them. Holy crap, we did it! Oh my gosh. I can't believe it, guys. Uh, we This is our first draft. This is our first chance looking at this set, and we did it. We went 3-0. and oh. On a, on a draft. That's pretty amazing. I'm very, very satisfied with that. That is incredible. Uh, let's go ahead and claim the prize. We got six packs. Let's, you know what? For the sake of having a little fun, we had another pack in there anyway. Let's go ahead and open up some packs, guys. Let's, let's finish off this one strong. Ooh, I like Bandit Lord. All right. Uh, I love this set. I think this set is really fun so far. Uh, like I said, I, oh yes. I love the the art in this set, um, but that was a very fun draft. Honestly, I think we we played it as best we probably could, not having a whole lot of experience with it at all, really. Uh, and so I'm I'm happy. I am beyond happy. Wow. All right. I can't believe it, guys. We did it. We'll end on this opening packs because uh, if you are interested, oh oh yes, the frost tyrant. Yes, please. Guys, if you're interested in more draft videos specifically, uh, or just limited videos, I should say in general, maybe we could do sealed at some point. Let me know. We don't do a lot of draft stuff. We usually do like actual constructed gameplay. Uh, but drafting is fun. It's something I I would like to get better at. Uh, and so if that is something you're interested in, please let me know because thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this one-off video. I really enjoyed playing. I really appreciate every uh, every one of you guys watching and hanging out with me. So thank you guys so much. Remember, we're, we're probably going to try and stream this weekend, but I will keep you guys posted on that as we get closer. But until then, guys, thank you so much. I'll hopefully see you tomorrow for some more games.